gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for graciously saving us through Jesus Christ and in him giving us life, even life eternal. We thank you for an opportunity that we can come before your holy presence. Receive us, Holy Spirit, and teach us today. Give us your strength so that we go out there, place our confidence in you, and show the world how good it is to be in you. Thank you for hearing us. And thank you because we know you will do much more than we have asked since we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for being patient with me. I know you've been praying for me and that uh, the things the Lord has placed in our hands, he will give us the grace to do as we are supposed to. So thank you very much. For this month, we have been talking about confidence. Uh, have you realized that each and every one of us has a level of confidence? You have a level of belief and trust and total commitment to a thing. You came to church this morning and sat in the pew confidently, being sure that the pew will hold you. Abby? When we were small children in school, they would place a chair that is spoiled so that when you come and sit on it, you go like that. How many of you can, John can relate to that? <laughs> And, and the boys and the girls will laugh at you. So you would never go to sit in a chair that you never had confidence would hold you. So each and every one of us has some confidence. Abi, you have confidence as this law case and that law case and the other one will be, you know, will be relevant for you to win this case. That's why you quote them, Abi. Except that sometimes you leave the law and dwell on conditionalities and technicalities to give cases where you want to. But each and every one of us has some confidence. We are confident that when we breathe in, we will take in oxygen in order to supply to our system to give us life and to give us strength. That's why you inhale in the first place. Because if you never had confidence that oxygen would come in, you would never inhale. The only problem is that you run into eternity quick. Every one of us has confidence that this small aquifer will give me some energy and will quench the, the hunger. Abi? And they are sure that this one will give me good health. But for other people, they look at the label first. They read the label to know what is the content of the team. But I assure you that in our place here, the thing you see on the level is not necessarily what you con contain in the team or in the can or whatever. Sometimes I fear those who eat regularly in eateries in town. I wonder sometimes whether the fried rice that was left over is collected and put back into their pot. You know, we can do anything for money, but you have confidence. Anybody here without confidence? We all have confidence. The only issue we have dealing with this month is where have you placed your confidence? Remember Exodus 25, our God says that he is a jealous God. Have you realized that? He is a jealous God. He's looking at you and watching you jealously to see where, who occupies the first place in your life. And for a believer, a saved child of God, your confidence should be in God and in God alone. Every other thing is secondary. So for today, we are confident that he has healed us. He will heal us and he will continue to heal us. Amen? It is hard for me to know that. Particularly in this our world today that has been polluted by almost everything. Not only the air has been polluted, though, the politics of our country has been polluted. Abi, the church is polluted. Everywhere you go is pollution everywhere. So who is going to heal you from all of this? For some of us, we think that it's only when your stomach, I was talking about quack doctors, call it belly or abdomen or whatever. It's been here. But health, real good health, is not only in your physical body. It is in your psyche. It's in your emotion. 
it even mentally. So a good condition of health is when your body is physically, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, mentally pure, so to speak, that you are said to be in good health. John 3, 2 to 4. John wrote and said, I wish, eh? and that I found pleasure and joy in the fact that my children are doing well in their spirit, in their physical body, and in everything that concerns their life. That when he receives news that they are doing fine, it gladdens his heart. So we are confident that Jesus Christ, the Lord our God, is our healer. No wonder the doctor says that they, they treat. Who cures? Have you come across that saying, wise saying? That they treat, but God heals. That God heals. That statement says that we can diagnose. That we can give all the therapy that we can. But the person that will take away what is worrying you is God. Total, holistic healing, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in whatever area of life proceeds from God and God alone. This is the state in which our loving God wants us to operate in this life. That you should be fine, that you should be strong, that it should be well with you in whatever area of life. You should be well physically, you should be well spiritually, you should be well in your emotions, in your psych. In, in, in your finances as well. You should be altogether whole. Is that the true situation with us today in our congregation, in our country, and wherever you go? I was telling my wife last night that the issue with us Christians, I read it, a quip and it was, it's up now. It says that the, the it's, it's very difficult for believers to believe Jesus. How many of us will quickly look at biblical principles to determine a particular move on an issue that has come before us? We would suppose my husband didn't treat me right. Am I going to search scripture and seek the face of the Lord to teach me how to respond to this my husband that is not doing very right? Or I would rely on my colleagues in the office. Or I will rely on counsel on Facebook. This is how my husband is treating me. Comments. Drop some comments. So, <laughs> if you would want to react to the comments that you get on Facebook, you would dial. All we're trying to say is that for whatever comes before I as a Christian, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult, no matter how distressing it is, I should be matured enough to wait and seek what will glorify God's name at the end of my action. So as an individual, I have to put God first and my confidence in him that he is going to do me right with this bad treatment I have received. From a colleague in the office, from a brother in church, from my husband, from my wife, from everybody else. That's what makes us mature. Now how many years I have lived as Liel, not how many baptismal cards I have rolled over, but it's based on where have you placed God in your life. That's where maturity comes. That's why you see smaller people who have placed God first will react more maturely than people who are, who are baptized by Kozi. You know the missionary from South Africa, Kozi? And so you don't be surprised if you see somebody who was baptized by Kozi acting, oh, uh, is laughing at <laughs> and, and for some of you who were baptized by people like us, Humble people like us in the 20s. You could be baptized 2017 and be ma more mature than somebody baptized 1911. Hmm? 
Because that's when we received our NKST. Please never leave today without a resolve, without a commitment that from now on, God will take first place in my life. Amen? In whatever area that concerns me. I think the first Sunday was that he guides us. My best guide is God himself. He has the best GPS system. John 16.33 says that. No, no, 16.13. When the spirit comes, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. He is your perfect guide. In whom have you confidence? He will guide you and lead you. He is your provider and protector. Is that right? Genesis 15.1, he says, I will bless you and be a shield. You know, there is some level of persecution you come up under when you begin to prosper small, small. How many of you have realized that? She thinks that... Uh, you know, there is something. Like, so he says that he will, he will be your shield. I will be your shield. That's protect you from every harm. In fact, if God has not been shielding us from ourselves, you would have killed yourself, myself. But we are saying that from now on, we'll have only confidence. In, and he will do you good. I'm just wishing as we... we Reason together and praying in my heart that God will cause that you will have a radical touch today. That you will refuse. Your righteous self will rebel at any thought that you will reside your confidence in somebody else other than the Lord himself. Our country, I read somewhere that that person said that Nigeria is the only country where they pray in the beginning of a meeting, tell lies and close the session with the prayer. So, as a nation, we, we need healing, though. Because <laughs> our leaders and us are sick, terribly sick. The, the, what is trending now is the professor who feigned to faint the other day. I was shocked to realize that he is a professor. I mean, what kind of professors? What? Professor of medicine? What is happening in school now, Otame? When we were young, you wouldn't play with a second degree holder. A PhD holder had an idea of every area of life. At least we have honorary doctorates. But... I have never heard of honorary professor, so I know this one also worked through. And look at the thing he, he put up on that day. If a professor in our country is like that, heh, we, are, we are gone. Because the professor is like a semi-governor in the academic world. Once you reach there, you are sure to receive something that will, if, if you have uh, BP, you have something to buy and load the pin for the rest of your life. And what do you, if it is not madness, sickness, ill health, what do you need a billion naira for? If you were spending one million naira every day, you would need a hundred and thirty something years to live in order to finish a billion naira. And for some of you, if you live up to 90, you become useless even to yourself. Because you go to sleep strong and you wake up with backache. For some of us that have reached senior citizens now, you know what I'm talking about. You slept fine and your finger, you woke up with your aching finger. Uncle No. Uncle No was an uncle back in the 20s. <laughs> so we are sick as a nation. We need to cry and seek the face of the Lord to heal our nation. See the way we do politics. See the way we, we, we handle and treat, you know, instruments of government. Uh, for me, I see that even internationally we are sick. 
man has always been seeking not for the good of man. What happened when they were talking about Bill Gates and vaccination chief? People, there was so much of big talk. In fact, they smashed ice cream on him in Spain. And for their culture, it's terrible for you to do anything like that to a person, a grown-up person. And something in my spirit said that if he does not retract in his steps, maybe one other day it will not be ice cream, it will be a bullet somewhere. I felt it. Is there a way out? Is, we can't go deep into these issues, but at least I want to trigger your thinking towards these areas. The West will lure our people to steal money and store there. Have you seen a very wicked or a poor man steal money in his country to come and invest in Nigeria? And so they will never allow in this our age and time, I, I think that any country that is serious with its affairs, more than 80% of those handling issues of government in our country will never be found in their leadership in those places. Even in Nigeria, the moment we want to move forward as a country, this caliber of people that we have in government today will not be the ones voted into or appointed to serve. How can you have a chief executive who does not understand simple street communication in another language, the one we spoke, speak in area one. You have to turn to your second to explain the question that the journalist posed before you in everyday passable English. But you're the overall boss. We are sick as a nation, oh, please pray. What happens when Christians are given opportunity to at least bring the light of Christ aboard? Even Christians are failing. For me, I think now the, the test for born again is we uh, should be power and money. So if you say you have received the Lord, you have prayed the sinner's prayer, we place you in some position of leadership and power and money to test your born again status. <laughs> Whether you take healing to such a department or you leave it poorer than when you first came. So, I tell you, there is a way out. We can, it's not too late to heal yourself and to heal our land. It is not late. God is still in the business of healing people. You can be strong in your health. You can be strong in your emotion. You can be strong mentally in every area of life. Now, the Bible says that for those who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with what? With healing in his wings. And you will leap up as though calves were released in the storm. Malachi chapter 2 verse 4 verse 2. There is still healing going out. Every day you wake up. Healing is in the wings of Christ. For you. For our country. For your family. For other people in the church as well. You can be healed. In Jesus name. Some theologize and say that healing. Nah, healing is right here right now. And maybe I should say that life itself was designed to be very simple. Because that's a state in which you can receive true healing. Do you know that our human system has been placed there? With, they talk about immune system. They talk about white blood cells that fight disease and every other thing else. God designed even ourselves to fight against anything that will bring disemployment you to your health. It was designed to be simple. The only problem is that we are making things complicated. And because of sophistication, we have troubles here and there. People have left the natural food they eat for, for processed food, for, for takeaway pack, 
for all that. For me, God is good though. There is God though. Some people just don't like eating anything from whether we have McDonald's here. We have, as the other day I saw the uh, Kentucky fries. So you can't have Abuja fries. You go and import Kentucky to come and be preparing Kentucky recipe for us here. I'm looking forward to that shop where they will begin to prepare fresh nune and uh, ativa and all of that. Anyway, Shia Yoruba, they call it a way that they are preparing. But our natural recipes have been born here in order to relish on some of these things. So if you begin to eat baked beans, beans is good, but eat the one that they, we were given here. You can, all, you can bake these ones also. Because Chemicals were used in order to process baked beans, to preserve, and even to can. So don't take a canned food too much, and don't worry yourself to go out and eat. If you are tired eating in the palo, at least come outside. That one is going out, but they said he didn't take us out on his birthday. You take us out. So if you are tired of eating in the room, bring your chair outside. You are eating outside, isn't it? You might not be fashionable. It doesn't bother you. As long as you're healthy, that's all it needs. By the way, when your kids come to Mabushi, they don't want to go back because there is space here. They are out now. So if the space in your house is too small, come out to church. Look at the whole of this. When I first came to Abuja, they were making fun of one of your members here. That what kind of man is he that he's never found anywhere other than that team church? But the man is still kicking and going healthy. And most of the thing, people that used, I'm not saying that somebody said bad word and died though. But I've discovered that most of the people who went out during that time are not here now. They have gone. So if so, anybody laughs at you that you're only found in church or around Christians, you can't come out to socialize. What is socialization? Is socialization drinking and partying and everything? It's relating to one another. But that's why they talk about social distancing, so that you don't come too close. <laughs> you can be healed today. As long as you stay within the parameters of the grace of God. You can be strong in every area of life. That's his word. The Bible says that he, he sends his word. And that's what? Heal all our diseases. Proverbs 3. You know, Proverbs is, Zaka, is wisdom saying. And God says that do not trust in anybody else. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not. On your understanding. That is seek him in everything you do. There you will find life. And there you will have direction for your life. And for your souls. And in chapter 4 verse 20 says. Healing. If you read verse 20 to 25. Because of time we might not go into all of that. But I think God will drop something on your heart. And you begin to walk with that confidence. That I am healed. I am well. I am strong because my confidence is in the Lord. I will also encourage you to read Psalm 119. The whole of that psalm talks about the power of God's word and dwelling in there. It's a psalm you must read. And lastly, you have been healed in order to heal. Hmm? How many of you are healed, by the way? Thank God for you. Please give the Lord a hand for that. And you know what? When you raised your hand, something jumped in my spirit and said, Thank God that you are in a congregation that health is everywhere. Hmm? Stop and think. What have you really, really wanted that the Lord has denied you? 
that's what you don't need. But everything you need, God will direct it toward you in every area of life. I am a living witness and I can testify to the goodness of the Lord. Uh, last Sunday, Otaman, I was, when they were announcing the July babies, I was saying that a time has come when we will find good quality time to come in here and do a testimony and praise service. Just that, in order to thank God for what he has done and is doing in our midst. We will do it in service, so it will not be any other thing else that we go on social media that will have me to answer some questions. Even if you ask questions, I think I do have some answers based on the word of God. Number one, I will answer in every humility and respect. Number two, <laughs> because I have been here around, uh, around enough to know how to, to respond to even the wrong I have done so that I will still be in the good books of whoever has any book anywhere. So you've been healed. If you're not healed here, I will ask Dundu and the rest of you to lock these doors until I'm sure you're healed. Amen? <laughs> if you're not healed after this service, it's your problem or it's not me. Because man of God is prophesying and laying hands on people. If you refuse to be healed, it's your palaver. Because Jesus himself said, it shall be done to you according to what? Your faith. Because I can sense the power of God. Luke tells us that when Jesus was teaching and he noticed that the power of God was present to heal, he healed them of all their sicknesses and diseases. I believe that. Five years ago, I would have been a dead man. No? I would have been picked from this congregation and buried in Bazak and Batia, where you buried my father. When I went, Otami, have I shared this testimony with you? We were doing the Mzo Castle Parade here, August of 2015. And I started feeling some dizziness in my system. The following morning, I went to Gogoleda Hospital. They told me, uh, one uh, consultant neurologist, a chief boy, came to me and whispered to my ears and said, Pastor, from the records we have seen, there is no reason. They first of all asked me who brought me. I told them I drove from Gariki and I am intending to drive back after a con consultation. And the man told me that from the records, from the tests they have conducted, there is no explainable reason why I am still seated in this chair. At best, I would have been in a serious coma. Because at the time, my BP was 235 over 180 something. But thank God, my worst reading now is 120 over 90. Now, to the glory of God. I, I had diabetes, type 2. I am, I'm, I've leaned to my mother. So, all of us were 8. We were 8. All of us that have leanings to our mother have the type 2. And my reading was 505. That's over... 30 millimole if you convert it. There is no way you can be alive with that kind of reading. But today, to the glory of God, I am 7.6 millimole per liter. I have not gone to you. I have not gone outside. I am telling you that this is a miracle of healing human being. And in every other area also. Just to encourage you, amen? Not to say anything about, you know, because man, eh, no, no, by the way, I'm a pastor, Abby. Uh -huh. So it's not that if you reach a certain level, you begin to experience. Uh -uh. If you know God enough to have confidence in him as a little child, you will receive your healing today in Jesus' name. So it's happening. You don't need to seek any... Well, if the Spirit is leading you to go share with somebody and seek counsel and seek help, beautiful. But I am telling you today, but even at that, 
except your faith agrees with his in prayer. I have seen many people who packed up playing professional football because they went somewhere for prayer. And the time they would have taken with the orthopedic people, they were somewhere. I am not. <laughs> I think we are together still, still here. You know, when I fell and broke my hand, I, I felt in my spirit to go receive treatment at Bar Mandel. You know Bar Mandel, Bar? NKSC Rehabilitation Hospital. Nka. And the following, it was on a Saturday. The following Sunday, by 5.30, I was towards Kefi with one hand. Big hand like this. I was driving with one hand. My mind was there. And the, about two days ago when I had received treatment and the POP, somebody called me from Abuja. I told them I was in Benue for treatment. I said, Pastor, in this time like this, you leave, a, <laughs> you leave the orthopedic consultant in Abuja to go to the village. But I told them that's where my spirit was leading me. If it led me to you know the Kwande people, they know this thing very well. They say that if Kwande will massage you, your hand will go. If my spirit gave me another Kwande here to go, I would have gone no, to Jatoaka and all of those places. But it led me to you know, for older people, it's more difficult for bones to get back together again. And that fact had slipped my memory. I was fine. The only problem I had that I said, what? For the next few months, I'll be, my hand will be like this. But my problem shifted from that one to the fact that maybe my hand might not, my bones might not be healed at the first trial. And to the Glory of God. When I went the first x-ray, every doctor just brought it up and nodded their head. I turned, when they did, I was 59 years old when they tested. One time, I turned 60 yesterday. And ironically, it was at Mka Christian Hospital. 5.30 in the morning. I came to this life, and I've been living in this life in good health for the past 60 years. Do you see some laziness in my spirit? It's not for anything. It's for God. He can do it for you. And I talk and release healing over you. That you will be content. The Bible, First Timothy chapter, it talks godliness with what? Contentment is great gain. It's not great profit. Who are the accountants here? I think gain is different. <laughs> profit after sales. Uh -uh, that, don't let that not come to your head. This one is after all is said and done. You will have nothing to lose. Amen. Because you are worshipping a healer, a healing God. You are worshipping a God who protects. Who are worshipping a God who guides. Who led you to do an investment that brought so much profit? You think it's your own intellect? God says that he has the power. He gives you the power to make money. Create wealth. The Bible says wealth. I think there is a difference between money and wealth. Which one do you want? Money or wealth? You want to be wealthy, but may you all be wealthy in Jesus' name. There is a price to eat. You have to work in order to reach there. Eh? Because if you just come and pray in church and prophesy over your thing and don't go out to do something that God will bless because he says, I will bless the work of your hands. I will not bless the... The brother or sister who speaks sweet, fluent tongues. If that was the thing. Hmm. But other people are billionaires in the spirit. But here now. They are waiting to see the love of God from people who will give them some handshake. And if you do, don't give that handshake. And pastor is talking about the love of God. You say, they talk about love, but love is not in your midst. 
because somebody never shook you and left something in your palm. But for you who wishes to be blessed this way, how many times have you blessed those people that are, you, you, you think are blessed enough to place something in your palm? How many times have you just gone past by to say, I want to thank God for your life and the representation you, you take in our congregation? You have been healed to heal. Romans 8 talks about even the world is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of who? The sons of God. Verse 19. So everybody is looking forward to you. Why are you waiting? At least we want to get some encouragement now over COVID-19, over every other thing from you. We are waiting to see you. Will you still place confidence in God? I am, later we will see. I am not saying that you flout every protocol. You go in that and still have confidence that your health is not coming from face masks. Your health is coming from there. Since I came back with Tamil, I have refused public places so, because for me, uh, this face mask, eh? when I see people with it, apart from the fact that I don't breathe fine when I put it on, if I put it on and take, breathe about five times, I will have to take it off and breathe about eight times quickly in order to replace the lost oxygen. <laughs> I was praying for this type, Otami, the other Sunday. Yesterday, I got one. The only problem is that I have not started using it. I would have used it this morning for the first time. I just tried it on my face last night. And I could see the steam on the dashboard because it's like a... <laughs> So in order not to cause people to worry, I don't go close to them too much. But if you come to see me in the office and you have yours, I think you and I are safe, Abby. It will not come to me, it will not go to you. <laughs> so I believe with all my heart, based on the Bible, that we have been healed in order to heal this land. God himself, this popular Verse from Chronicles 2, 7, 14. Everybody is waiting on you. Because God is waiting on you to cry to him. To beg him. Not to beg him too much. But to tell him what he has told us to tell him. That's all. And he will come, forgive our sins, and do what? Heal our land. We have been healed to heal. Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. So he has drafted you. In fact, in Luke, he says, Look up, and you will see that the fields are white. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 20, they talks about. Go and heal. For these signs, I follow them that I believe, isn't it? How many of you believe that these signs are following you? They are following you. You were given three checks, three post-dated checks. One at the beginning of semester, the second at the middle. The last one is just to prepare and some transport fare to come home. If you refuse to sign the check and present to the bank at each of these three times, would you have money? Barrister, you go get money. You will die here. You will trek home. In <laughs> because you refuse to appropriate by faith what was given to you. And of course, maybe I should remind us that when God is talking about this sign shall follow them in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 following, he's not talking that this, all of these things will be given to one person alone to take pride in the congregation that I can heal, I can speak beautiful tongues, sweets like canary, I, I, can, I can do signs and wonders and everything and everybody will be saying, hey, that brother is so full. Hmm? 
when God is talking like this, he is talking about his community. Hmm? He is talking about his congregation. He is talking about his church. He is not talking about single brothers like that. He is talking about right here, you have people who have been given the capacity to heal. You have people who have been given the capacity to speak in tongues and even to prophesy and to speak hidden things from the Lord. You know, when you speak in tongues, you are receiving from him, you are communicating with him, and you have been given a gift to interpret for our edification. So I believe with all of my heart that each, that each of these gifts are here. Some might have two, might three, depending upon how God wants to use you. So you have been healed to heal. Some, you know, people think that gifts like counseling, edification, encouragement are small gifts. So. But if you don't encourage a huge man, if you don't give him wisdom, if you don't counsel him, he will go and kill somebody with his energy and he will end up being killed. Did you know that? If you receive, refuse counsel, you will carry, because in our thinking, because we are sick, people think if you don't have raw cash, you are not intelligent. And people acquire cash here not because they work hard. It's because they stole. Or maybe they had a friend who stole and gave them to keep. And because of that, they gave them some percentage. You think it's, it's money? People have stolen money from this country and given him to manage for them. That was why when he had a problem with the Tiku, they closed down Benue Cement for a moment. But they quickly reconciled and production is going on. But he will tell you that he started business some few years ago with 150,000. Uh-huh. Because we are dummies, we are sick in our country. We can't put things together. But I remember when I was growing up as a kid, we used to know Chang Changi and Sons. How many of you used to see all, all the good trucks, all the good tankers, everything was Chang Changi and Sons? But that evil kingdom has collapsed now. Even the Chang Changi air is only now on a signboard. You can't see Chang Changi in the air again. But Chang Changi airline is still there somewhere in. Uh, Sabotasha in Kaduna. You have been healed to heal. Tell them. You don't need all of that money. Kingdoms have fallen. That were here existing with power and energy and, and wealth. They are no longer there. So also individuals. I have known people in my life who had everything they needed. But their children are begging bread today. I rather would encourage you to come to him who will never allow your kids to beg for bread because you revered him. Somebody was saying that they, they go to farm at home because they want to put stuff for their children. That's a curse. Anybody who lives here to go and look for stuff or a piece of land for their children when they die, I say, may the Lord stop you in your tracks. Don't pray that kind of bad prayer for my children. Amen? I wish that when they leave Abuja, they become international citizens. How about that one? You want, I am here in Abuja. After all, my, it's me that my humbly cord, cord was buried in Benwell. So for you, the small ones here, I pray that when you finish secondary school here, the Lord will open gates for you to become an international student in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid, parents, that where will I have money to send them? You will send them. You will. It's cover, cover, you will send. Just have the faith that is required. Never be afraid. For you, weeping and crying in your heart because of the hardship of this life. Uh, how I wish and pray that before we leave the sanctuary today, the Lord, our healer, will heal you. So that you will never carry that burden again. I know, I know men who, who, you know, when I start talking about the kind of treatment women go through sometimes in their homes, sometimes I begin to weep. And I don't want to cry this morning in your pulpit. But I know what other women are going through. 
but you're healed today in Jesus' name. You know, husbands too sometimes get mistreated. Though. Did you know that? You think you have power. The power sometimes is in the head. Though. Because when we were small boys, I used to see older people marry 18-year-old girls. How many of you saw that kind of thing? And the girls might would want to marry these people because this, all they meet, the portion that, that this man was giving is in your control now. Mimi, if you went to a village meeting and all the meat that they tie, you are the one in control of in his own abolata now. You are controlling it. So you will find a girl of 17 years controlling a man of 60-something years. Because some, even if you wake up to go to work and she decides to be angry with you, that feeling will lead you to the office. So you go and sit on your table. After prayer, you begin, sometimes even before your prayer, you begin to seek your mind and search. What, where did I go wrong that one blamo was angry with me? And so the case you wanted to work with, you now begin to, was it with, with Alfred and uh, Tobias, 1981, you, all the cases will fly now. Thank God that people in the city don't marry two small girls. When you are touched, they encourage you to marry somebody that at least is 23, like that. And they used to tell us that if you marry somebody that is your age, she will grow old and leave you. Is that true? Eh? For me, my sister has dealt with me very well. I wanted to marry a lady my age. They said, no, you can't do that. She will finish, but she will become your mother now. (laughs) So you go, foolishly go and marry somebody that you are 20 years older than, 15 years, 12 years older than. You are, but, you know, at the first instance, you'll be doing fine, though, because there will be still some energy there. But remember, you are up there on the ladder of life. She is just coming like this. So. But now, you know, you require energy for everything, issue of life. Then you come to your prime. Or you're up there, she's coming this way. When you begin to come down this way, she's not yet at the top. Then we will know who is really, really old and who is not. Eh? Your, your house will spoil now. Adi. <laughs> so even in this area, we pray that you'll be healed in Jesus' name. So that you will marry somebody you can relate to on a daily basis without a problem. Even if she gets old, I know that my God can create a new love for the, that old woman in my heart. And for those of you who did that and you are looking that my wife is getting older, never called her old woman. Look at her in the same eyes you saw her when she was 15 years in divine love. Personal. <laughs> I have a wife for over 20 years. I know what they feel. Women don't want to be called old woman. Old woman like you. Oh, you don't spoil the thing. Never do that. And I release every husband here from bad talk in Jesus' name. Whether you are angry, never say it. Even if you say this, this small girl, and you always cause me to worry. But she, in her heart, she knows that, no, at 50, I can't be small girl now. But, <laughs> but for you, she is still a baby. And Demesu, whom would you marry when you grow up? We are talking about healing. We, life is supposed to be simple. We are only complicating issues. Though. So when you complicate issues... You attract sickness from every side. My time is gone, but this is what happens. Make room for God to heal you. 
Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 says, bear each other's burdens. It's not this one that went down court on. That one too. But this load of life is even heavier than the 10 yams in the basin. James chapter 5 says, if any amongst you seek, let him call the elders of the church. That's the church. And when the pastor and elders are going to pray, they are representing all of you. It's not that, oh, pastor and Botam. Uh -uh. He is representing the church. Let him call the church. Represented, the church will be represented because all of us can't go. Even choir don't visit every choir now. And don't be angry that they have not visited you because it is simply not very feasible. Everybody goes to work and everybody and city life and things like that. So don't be angry. Amen? But if any of you is sick, make, take advantage of these opportunities. The only problem is that we are afraid to pray for people to get well. You say, suppose I pray and it doesn't get well. How many of you have received that kind of temptation? For me, it's temptational. Shake yourself off from that one. Your business is to pray. Whose business is it to heal? Have you not put confidence in him enough in your prayer that if I pray, he will heal? I pray over everybody. Even on the street, I meet him, I pray. I pray for Igbo people in area one too. My mouth, they talk now. You know, pastors, they talk. If you see me learning like this, if you go where I'm talking with people on the street, say, hey, this man too, they talk. Pray. You will be amazed how many people will come to thank God for your life because you prayed a prayer and I got well. Don't be afraid. Pray the prayer that will bring God's glory to the forefront. Don't pray for hidden things. Pray for things that people can look at and say that God did something when this man prayed. When this woman prayed. By the way, women are supposed to be praying more than men now. They sabi pray. When you come to Mzo Kasi and they are praying, sometimes they pray and talk, free talk with God. That uh, my Wuhan called me from Lagos. All oh, this one is prayer. <laughs> It's we the men that we think that prayer is supposed to be a structured pattern, template that we use each time we come. But for them, they will even give testimony of how credit finish and the call refused to cut. <laughs> These people can pray. If you have any issue, please maintain a cordial relationship with your wife so that when you have issue, just tell her. As you leave worry, just tell mommy. This is the thing. I want you to pray for them. And the biggest one is the children. Because they pray with the children. I want to tell you a secret. Sometimes if you are hurrying to go out, they gossip about you and then pray for you also. So for parents, I'm telling you that sometimes even if you hear say they gossip, don't worry. Because sometimes they gossip before the children and they will leak unconsciously. So even if you hear that one, don't talk. Believe that mommy and the children pray and everything will be all right. Amen? Amen? Children pray, Father, give daddy money so that she can buy food for us. And God will hear and do it. Too. Don't be angry with your parent that he never brought any rice for morning chop. Have confidence and God will do it. Amen? Finally, the Bible tells us that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good, healing people of their diseases and giving them. I want to believe and to announce to you that if you trust in him, if you believe him, if you have your first confidence in him, he will give you that anointing as well. Because you will be healed. And you will go about healing other people as well. And you will have the strength to live a life of thanksgiving for God's healing. You will just be 
Father, thank you for good health. Thank you because my children are working in good health. Thank you because daddy is strong and can go. You will live a life of thanksgiving all through. If you receive him by faith, you will submit to him. You have full confidence in him and he will give you perfect healing and good health. We shall be responsible citizens because some people who are not balanced in their faith will take to the extreme and get into wahalao. But those who have received him and have received that anointing will know that, yes, I have to follow the protocol given by all the health workers, yet inside of me. Do you know that even COVID-19 people are going down for COVID? Even in this senior PTF that I share, maybe they have refused, stopped doing the work and sharing the donations that are coming in. That's why divine judgment is coming quickly. <laughs> Some of the bigger ogas in the COVID-19 are down with it now. But see us on the street. Do you know that if you, now they are saying Benue has it. But if you go to my village like this now, they will laugh at you. Christmas is not here and you are doing a jigwe already. <laughs> because you know this COVID like big people. Did you know that? There is some inert deceit that makes you lose your guard once you be, start getting something. There is some level of pride that makes you forget small, small things that you would have taken seriously. So if COVID-19 goes to Benue State now, guess where it will land? You are on social media, so I don't need to go too far. Me, I'm not there so much, so. And finally, we are making a statement of commitment that from today on, our confidence is in the Lord. And you will live happy life. You will live prosperous lives. You will live healthy lives. You will, you will live, you will enjoy life. In, even in your marriage. First Corinthians 7 says, marriage is meant to be enjoyed. Get your healing in every area of life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today and for even in this COVID-19 and all the protocol you've given us an opportunity that we can come and worship you corporately. Thank you for the words we have attempted to release to your people. Spirit of God, pass through these words and teach your congregation this morning. Help us and take us to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. May God bless you.